guys. So here it is. Let me open the show. <laughs> unreal. Unreal. You know, having to do with finances, man, the devil like gets shaken in his boots. Um, this is just sent this over. Jenna just sent it over. Go to where the spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. So go get it. You know where it is. Joincountry.com. Dolores Closet. Um, I'm not going to go any further. I'll talk to you more about it at the end, but great t-shirt, a lot of great stuff over there. Just, she's got all kinds of sales. Just go. Um, the other thing is Chicago gathering April 13th. Uh, go here, get your free tickets, just register. You can register up to four at a time. That's about it. That's all I'm doing. So I'm going to pick John up again. Okay, John. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is what, this is what. What I what I'm hold on, I had notes. Unreal, man. Okay, <laughs> do me a favor, guys. Yeah. This is <laughs> they said tenacious Delora wins. That sounds like um, you. <laughs> yes, it does. Okay, so this is John Dowling, uh, guys. You know, Everyone. you know, I don't have finance people on here that I don't trust. <laughs> so I spent some time on the phone with him. Um, he's on Denise Bolin show a lot. I love her. I trust her. So, um, what I can say is that I, I, John, if you could give them a little bit of your background, a little bit about you, who you are, and then, um, let's just go into it from there. Okay. okay. Awesome. Sure. Sure. Well, kudos on the creativity of circumnavigating the enemy's agenda there for sure. Uh, <clears throat> I am a person. No. Um, <laughs> hi, everybody. <laughs> Start with that. I'm, a, I'm not a bot. I'm not an AI. I'm a real person. Uh, no, I'm, um, I grew up in a town that only Deloren of a handful of people have ever heard of, West Springfield, Massachusetts, which is the other end of Boston, uh, closer Can to we Connecticut. Stop? Well, let's stop right there a second. Guys, you have to understand. Dennis grew up in West Springfield, Massachusetts. When I ever, and I lived in Aguam, when I ever found out John lived in West Springfield, I almost flipped out. Go ahead. <laughs> well, this is going to be a two hour interview the way we're going. It's funny. No, no one um, hour. One hour. I promise. No, no, I know. I promise one hour. I'm by the hour. I tell you, it's my sugar. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, so I grew up where you grew up, um, born and raised, very happy to be from the East Coast in that part of my life. And been in the music business for most of my life. I started playing when I was about five and um, continued from there, obviously, through high school and grade school and went to Berkeley College of Music in Boston. And I got a uh, bachelor's in performance and master's in music business management. And the idea, the premise being that I would be able to make a good living at my God-given talent so that I wouldn't be taken advantage of, <clears throat> excuse me, later on in life, which served me well because I was dealing with a lot of major labels and investors. I'm giving them your audience the cliff notes. Um, 2001, I started to make a shift that I recognized I needed to go the route of angel investors as opposed to the labels because both their banks and, <coughs> excuse me, both their businesses, it's just that with uh, the right investor, just like the right romantic relationship, if you get the right connection, you get a lot more of a personal touch than you would with a, a label that just wants you to sell your soul and get what they call a 360 deal, which is they take every piece of your career from publishing to writing to recording, touring, uh, the mastering of the record they want. They want the catalog. They want the whole pie and they don't even make anything. And you saw that last night on display with the, as I call it, the Stuper Bowl, where you saw a lot of satanic rituals there. And I had a chance to get signed in 2007 by Richard Branson with Virgin Records and God sidestepped that, thankfully, as we talked about offline, because <clears throat> God showed me years ago, I want you to do it with my money, not the devil's money. And I'm, I'm grateful that he put such great lengths to protect me. Only by the grace of God go all of us and myself included. So um, so I met a, okay, so I'm, in 2012, I met a, in the continuation of meeting investors trying to find the right click for my music, I met a Chinese and American gentleman who were starting a, <clears throat> music production company and they were looking for a flagship artist and they thought I might be it. And then they decided they want, I got to the meeting and I met the consigliere guy and I had to sign an NDA, which is a non-disclosure agreement. We'll get into that later with, with regards to the financing. Cause there's a whole dilemma about that, which I'll help clear up. And the guy says, Oh, you should go get while you're in, I'm in Los Angeles, this meeting. 
<clears throat> the guy looks like, you know, uh, Tony Tabasco with the pinky ring and the whole, he's a walking cliche. <laughs> Even though he's from San Francisco, he sounds like he's from Brooklyn, you know? And anyway, so he's, uh, he's going, oh, you should pick up some dinar while you're here in the city. I was like, some what? I know what he's talking about. <clears throat> no, it's a Rack's currency. You know, we know the, the long told, uh, uh, attributes of this of great country. So I said, well, let's focus on seeing if this matches and I could take some discretionary income and I could do that. Well, it came and went, didn't happen. I got real depressed. I went on my recliner and I prayed to God and he said, look up Christian angel music investors, <coughs> excuse me on LinkedIn. And, uh, it's my third interview today. So a little bit hoarse. And so, um, and I met my mentor, Donald Ward, who I subsequently interviewed on my, my show a few months back. People can look that up. And he said, uh, what if the Lord could make you your own banker? And I said, what are you talking about? He goes, well, have you heard about foreign currency? And I said, does this have to do with the dinar? I just heard about this. And he said, yes, in the Vietnamese dong. So now I know I was you know, hearing from God correctly. It wasn't my own crazy machinations. So a year later, I ran into a Vietnamese investor who was from Ho Chi Minh City, formerly Saigon. And now I knew like, okay, God is definitely walking me down a path with this. And I told him that in short term, I would be able to pay him back if he worked with me. It was to try to build a bridge. And I showed him the dong in his eyes. You know, most people who know anything about Vietnamese people, especially business people, they're very, uh, they, they wrote the book on stoicism. You know, you, you can't get much out of them. They, are, they would be great poker players because they've got the poker <laughs> thing literally down. They're like a blank expression. And that's done on purpose. Um, when I showed him the dong, he, the Vietnamese dong, not the crazy, <laughs> not people here, but every time I say dong, it, people get a little bit fifth grade-ish on me. When I showed him the Vietnamese dong, he just, his, he got very wide-eyed and expressive, like his eyes lit up like silver dollar pancakes. And now he knew that I knew what was going on. And so, uh, that's kind of where it all started. And so I've been avidly in this for about 11 years now. Certainly has taken. Okay, away. now, now for those, now for those, John, uh, who you said uh, avidly in this, explain. This is like kindergarten. We got to start at the beginning. Dinar okay. and dong are currencies <laughs> from Correct. those countries. Okay, so continue from there. Sorry, I just assumed my misassumption. Yeah. That I knew. Your yeah, a lot. Well Some healed. people look, they might, but you know, <laughs> yeah. there's there's hundreds and hundreds on right now, and I'm sure all of them do oh, not. Good, know. no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> not so sure at all. Um, no, that's that's fair. So I right. So there's if you study the map, there's roughly 209 countries, including all the provinces like Trinidad and Tobago and Alaska and Puerto Rico and on and on it goes <clears throat> all the little sub islands like the Cook Islands and Hawaii, right, of which there's seven because I've been to Hawaii a few times. I've been blessed to be there. And when this is finally done, I get a vacation. I look forward to going back, uh, especially the uh, Kauai in the south side of Poipu. It's quite lovely and, and a lot more quiet and off the beaten path. Um, so there's all these currencies at play that are going to be part of what's called the global reset. Um, there's the Great Reset that people know, which is what the enemy's plans are, which will not happen, which they will try, but it won't happen. God wins and we win by proxy. And then there's the Global Godly Reset, which I'm part of, you're part of. And it comprises of all these countries' respective currencies and bonds, which we'll get into a little bit later. So the flagship one that will start it all is the Iraqi dinar. And then following up that subsequently will be the Vietnamese dong that we've touched on. And then there are other ones that will follow in, in a long line over a period of time. So in the kindergarten version, that's the cursory update. Okay. Um, <laughs> with, with this, the revaluation of currencies, why do they want to revalue <laughs> currencies, John? <clears throat> And why will it happen? Why must it happen? And at that point, what does that mean to the dollar and those that are controlling the United States financially? Well, that's a lot of questions inside of a question. That's it a is. question. That's a question. Uh, triple decker pastrami there. Um, <laughs> so, as we would say back east, grinders. That was a multi. Yeah, a grinder. <laughs> Multi-tiered grinder. People are like, what's that grinder? Yes. It's a sub. Yes. Just a colloquialism for a sub. 
Okay, so let's take your questions one at a time because I can't remember. So what was the first question? The first question was, please explain <laughs> the reevaluation of currency and why it must happen. Not, so not if it will happen, but when it when. will happen. Well, if I knew when, I'd probably have a trillion fans by now or whatever, but uh, followers. But it's there's two things. There's a revaluation and a reinstatement. So let's unpack it kindergarten style. Revaluation is currencies that have never revalued before that are about to for the first time. Example would be the Thai bot in Thailand, the uh, Venezuelan Boulevard, uh, which everybody asks about, uh, the El Salvador uh, currency, the Colombian peso, things like that, right? <clears throat> then you have countries like Vietnam and Iraq who have revalued before. Back in the 1940s, the, don the dinar was $4.07 pre Hussein, and it went as high as $5. It's got to go back again, and it will happen again because we're at an imbalance point. The world has, for example, the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and they have sub-countries in the BRICS, right, under the Ananagram that are forming a coalition as we speak to de-dollarize. We dropped it on my channel a couple weeks ago that the BRICS overtook the G7 for the world's largest share of the GDP, which is the gross domestic product. How much profit and loss each country makes in the goods, goods and services, excuse me, they respectively produce. <clears throat> excuse me. So they have to, uh, it has to happen because the whole country, the whole world is untenable. It's, it's a dramatic global high wire, and we've been walking that high wire for too long, and we, we're we not going to be able to it's, – it's not sustainable. It's going to fall off the cliff. So the world is tired of having the deep state dollar hamstrung around their neck like a noose, and they're fighting back. You see you know, Dutch Deutschland, you see Spain, you see Germany, you see all these farmers revolting against the government. This is part and parcel of what they're fighting against is the establishment. So you're seeing – <clears throat> you're seeing the people, we the people, take a stand. <clears throat> so we've had a dollar that has not been backed by anything since 1971 under President Nixon, who was under duress from Henry Kissinger to uh, force the gold standard off the cliff and use the petrodollar so that we could put all these countries in bondage. Uh, Saddam Hussein, who was painted as a bad guy, was just the opposite. He, he right. and... Saudi Arabia, one of two or three nations who would not go on a central bank system. The central bank has been, uh, with the nice way to do this, has been um, imprisoning us for, you know, centuries, going back almost an eon, going back to the feudal period and the serfs and Magna Carta. I mean, it's going back, you know, seven, eight hundred years um, in short parlance. So it has to happen. And. So I'm sorry, what were the other questions you had? So I'm not just going on. Um, okay, so no, that's okay. You can keep going. Uh, what I what I want them to know is that's why we called it the fall of the deep state. Right. How does this enter into that? If, <laughs> if, if everything revalues, and I know we have spoke about this and you said every, things are gonna value revalue probably one to one. Is that what you're saying? Level like, playing field like is what President level, well level yes. playing field is what President Trump's been saying. I'm just I'm saying I, we don't do rates and dates on my channel because people a Good. hold you to that and well and it, this is God's blessing. I, I think if people just I'm speaking to the whole of audiences on your side and my side just to be consistent because my my audience is very discriminating and discerning and I'm sure yours is as well. I just don't know yes. them as well yes. as as my own audience, of course. Uh, <clears throat> and they look for continuity. And so that's what I want to bring to both sides of the equation. It's just bottom line, Delore, it's untenable. It cannot go on. All you have to do is go to the grocery store and the gas station as just two prime examples. I'm sure you've got lots of people in your audience that are married, have kids, and they can appreciate this kindergarten point. You see the prices going up, but the quantity and quality of what you're getting isn't changing. So you have to ask right. yourself, what's right. the common denominator? The common denominator is it's costing more dollars to, to buy the same things you did a year ago, two years ago, five, 10, 20, and so on, depending on, on how, old, how old you are and how long you've been around. So that should tell you that the dollar is losing value because it wasn't backed by anything to begin with. The only thing that we've ever had as far as a dollar is the good faith and credit of the government. Does anybody have any faith and credit in this government? I don't. 
Wow. We are the government. We the people. We need to get That's back right. to the people's economy. Secondly, the military is the prime backing or constituents of a country's infrastructure. <clears throat> Ours is severely compromised on purpose, and we know why, so we don't have to get into that. So when you don't have that, you have a bottomless system with, you know, a bottom end system with nothing to support it, no structure. So gold and silver are the backstop. Haggai 2.8, the gold and silver are mine. It's God's money. So we need to bring that back as a backstop. And that's what Basel 3 and 4 compliance and the new banking systems is about, is, which is why they're fighting it. Basel 3 and 4, in simplest terms, is it's a level of transparency that forces these banks. When I say these banks, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, Citigroup, HSBC, Bank of America, what's left of it. Because um, I, I did a show last week with a fellow New Yorker, Greg Manorino, and he agrees that Bank of America is going to be the first one to fall. I personally believe that they're going to be baked into Wells Fargo because Wells Fargo will want to. OK, them. stop there a second. Stop there a second now. When okay. now, because I know what I'm going to see in the chat in about two mm. seconds. Yeah. Say Bank of America falls, Chase falls, whoever it is. What does that mean for people with savings? With uh, any anything connected to that bank, what does that mean to them? Okay, good question. So I'm going to answer it two ways, okay? Because the point of this is, you know, faith over fear, right? So we should not be right. fear-based. What we need to be, <coughs> excuse me, especially in the Christian Wise. community. Wise. <clears throat> what we need to be is proactive, not reactive. Too many Christians I see in the church and in these chats I'm not saying your audience. I'm just speaking in generality. So don't anybody attack me. Yes. Is we're, yeah. we're seeing we're seeing too much fear based and and reactionary responses instead of proactive. Just take a deep breath. The bad guy always makes his move first, and the God always has the last move and the last word in 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 chess parlance. So they're going to try to do what's called a bail in. <clears throat> they did a bailout. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Pardon me. They they did a bailout in 2008. Uh, when we had the too big to fail, do you remember that? Right, and, right. And, and they they lent all these banks debt, and they were supposed to give it back to us. And of course, they put it in their pockets. So we have a bailout. Now it's like a car has an exhaust intake and an outtake, you know, balance. Now what they want to do is a bail in, <clears throat> whereby they want to take people's money and and basically pack up shop and leave. There's another school of thought that the new financial system, also commonly known as the QFS, the quantum financial system, is going to have a yes. mirroring effect that will back things up in gold and silver on a digital asset platform. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say digital is bad. Here's the deal. Long term, yes. Short term, no. OK, for the next three to five years, God is going to give his people a portal or a way of escape through other avenues like gold and silver and platinum, palladium, rhodium, all these precious metals, mm -hmm. coupled with the quantum financial system to get into certain cryptos, to get into certain currencies and all these mechanisms to get into this wealth transfer. He's going to, do you remember that movie? Uh, I need to use a visual example. Do you remember that movie? Um, uh, uh, the, um, National Treasure, Nicolas Cage? Yes. I just and, watched it. Okay, it's one of my it's one of my favorite movies. That's in terms funny. Of, in terms Me of too. The financial, yeah, because they talk, they give a lot of predictive programming comms in that movie in the financial system. Talk about the Freemasons. That's right. And they That's show their right. hands. The anyway, thing. Yeah. there's a scene where you know that he's trying to hold the gate open long enough and get everybody out, and then it closes. And you could you yeah. know, there's a million movies like that that scene. But I believe metaphorically that's what God is going to do for His people in this season is keep the gate open long enough for God's people to, to take advantage of this wealth before it comes down. And we need to get out of major cities. We need to be in owning our own land, precious metals, canning our own food, heirloom seeds, weapons, if you like, which also the munitions or the, the, the ammunition has uh, brass and silver in it, which is, goes back to metals. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then bartering. That's what my grandparents did. And we're very successful with that. And they used to tell me about it when I was a little kid back in the day. So it's a return to the center. So short term, the digital system, the new digital economic reality is a good thing. Long term, not so much. But again, the whole point you and I talked about this offline is to become your own central bank. How do you do that? Well, we just talked about it. The, the steps that I talked about just now 
are some of the key steps that you can take to be proactive, get out of the system. So I'm not a financial advisor. This is not constituted as financial advice. I'm just sharing yes, valuable information. Yes. Being given Everybody, to me. please know that. Know that. Don't, yeah, don't, know that. Don't, don't put your money into something and then get back to us and say it didn't work. Right. We're giving think, you what what we understand, and John is doing the same thing. He's not yeah. a financial advisor. I'm just Thank telling you, you what I have that. done. No, I appreciate it. I'm telling you what I have done per your question. I think if people diversify, just like anything else, <clears throat> any financial advisor, by the way, they work for the bank. They don't work for you. And you can tell because they're always trying to get you into bonds and mutual funds and what they call derivative debts, which is just debt. <clears throat> right? Things that are good for the bank, not necessarily good for we, the people. But the point is any financial advisor would tell you to diversify anyway. So I'm not saying anything differently in that respect than they would, but this is what I have done. Cryptos, currencies, bonds, metals, getting into land, um, getting a water source, growing my own food. I mean, I'm very blessed in the music, the music business in the sense that once I get God's money, that he's bequeathing to me for a time to build a legacy, you know, numbers like a man leaves, a good man leaves a legacy for his children, children's children, da, 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 da. Um, I'm, I'm following those orders to a T. The music industry has seven streams of income. So what people should do, I also believe once they get these resources from the Lord, is build streams of income through your talents, right? We go back to Matthew 25. Don't be that third guy that buried that one talent in the ground. It didn't work out too well for him. Use the talents that you have right now while you're in process of this transition. Um, we were not put here to pay bills and die. I can guarantee you that. But as far as the banks go, um, that's that. And I would be looking to be in three to five banks minimum, particularly uh, credit unions and small banks. Very simple questions. You can ask, get meet with a manager. <clears throat> Just say you want to do some field research. You want to know how much debt they have on the books. Are they part of Fed now? Are they pushing CBDCs? Um, how long have they been in business? 25 years or more is usually a good benchmark, right? How many employees do they have? How long have those employees been at the bank? Um, is it locally owned? Is it owned by a corporation? Are they trying to do a merge? Simple things that you can do on your own. You don't have to be a genius to do it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we got a, a few people, are, uh, and I mentioned this to you. Uh, we, we were talking in text. Yeah. Someone said, what about those that don't have extra money to do this? I get, I get that there question all so the time. There are so many will not be able to do and buy currency, buy silver, <laughs> buy gold. Right. What do you do if we can't do that? Sure. I get that question on my channel all the time. It's, I, I understand it. Please, nobody throw tomatoes. I hope they're not throwing tomatoes. I hope it's good feedback. No, so they're not. I have in the most amazing community. And they're I'm very sure. savvy and they're very mature. But well, they just, this is a subject they don't, I have never brought anybody on. With well, that's subject. why I didn't do kindergarten because I figured they were savvy. So I didn't want to talk beneath their station. So, but that's fine. Yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. There's two answers I have for that. Number one, let's go back to faith. Do you have faith of a mustard seed? Do you believe God can overcome your current circumstances? Do you honestly think where you are is where you're going to stay? So that is a mindset issue. They have not made the shift. I'm sorry, but that's that's the harsh reality. I'm not unsympathetic to where they are. I'm just saying you have to look at it the way God looks at it. Isaiah 54, 11, Absolutely. his thoughts are not our thoughts. And it's not, being it's not being discompassion. I'm just saying you have to start visualizing yourself in a different place than where you are because you're not a slave. You've been freed. So you have to think with a freedom. So it's a mindset shift. Number two. I would say to those people what I say to my people that ask that. Um, maybe you have talents that, let's say you have, uh, you're in a neighborhood and your neighbor, you know, is, they're not super rich, but they're doing okay, <clears throat> you know, and you're close with them. Maybe you have talents that they need. Uh, what my grandmother did back in the 80s and 90s is, is my Uncle Hank was a Masonist. So they traded services. He would do all her stonework. She had a lot of brick in the house and she'd hem all of his clothes. She would, be, she was right. a seamstress in the war. And, and so she, they would trade services. Maybe you can barter right now instead of waiting until it gets so bad and being proactive, like I just said, and barter with those services. Maybe your neighbor will give you an ounce of silver if you come close or you can do stitch work or, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe you're good at 
writing and they need writing help. I mean, just find a way to use your talents that don't cost anything that come from the Lord and start bartering with that for the position you're in. Here's the third response. There's going to be people like me, people like you, people like many other Christians in this community when they come across this wealth who will help said people. Because as our fellow uh, prophet, Kim Clement, said, when we get this money with the dinar, what are we going to do, Dolora? Feed the poor, the lonely, the needy. That's right. The hungry, That's right. The widows, I can't wait. Orphans. I can't wait. I can't quick, wait. Quick story to, to add to as an addendum to your, to your person's question. I was tasked a couple of years ago with creating what I call, for lack of a better term, a tithing charity list, just in a group of people to help. <clears throat> when I, was, I noticed I was building the list, <coughs> excuse me, it kept getting bigger and bigger. And as I was editing it one night and editing amounts and things like that, this God is so good to give us creative um, leeway with these things, right? He he gives us the talents and he says, well, have fun, you know, you know, try things and counsel me and I'll let me counsel you and I'll back and forth like a relationship, right? And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me one night when I was working on it, you know, you're helping four widows, right? I was like, what? And she said, she said, uh, yeah. And I looked at the list. I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, take a second look. So I started looking down and I'm like, oh my goodness, you're right. Of course, always right. The Holy Spirit. And I didn't, because I don't think like that. I don't think, well, I got I don't have a quota. I got to have a ton of widows and 15 orphans and three poor people. I don't think that way. I just, whoever's on my heart to help, I help. But that's the thing. When we are, we are being obedient and we are, we are, um, we are, our hearts are knitted to the Lord in an authentic way. Uh, passionate, uh, spirit-filled way, by means of that, we're going to tap into how the Holy Spirit thinks, right? And that's going to become a, a typical result. So a long, long-winded long answer is the, the third part is Christians like us are going to help people in this person or person's position to give them a leg up. I have a neighbor all the time. I don't usually talk about this, but I'm just making a point. You know, she has a hard time. She's kind of a shut-in. So I'll, you know, quietly bring her little, you know, towels and canned goods and get her mail and things like that. There's things we can do that don't cost anything right now. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me just jump in real quick here. Uh, I, I, I'm reading, I'm reading everyone in the chat. The chat's really going crazy here. They got all kinds of questions, but just so um, you guys know, we, I hate to use the cliche, we get by with a little help from our friends, but it's very true. Mm. Uh, I've already, because of, just so you understand, we live in a small neighborhood um, of homes. Uh, I've already, if the grid goes down or anything happens, we've already got a plan of action. I'm going to go to each door. We're going to combine efforts, keep things safe. This doesn't happen like that and John said it, you have to give this some thought. Now, for example, two people said I'm recently widowed. There aren't any extra dollars. If I uh, were you, I would join uh, who's in the area, church in the area, get to know people in the area, uh, to go to meetups, clubs, get uh, connected with other folks because when this happens there's going to be people helping people and i know we're already trying to stock up and everything for those that won't have so i think it's very important online is wonderful and i love that we're connected <laughs> and many of you you know are you consider us your church on sunday nights and 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 that's awesome but here's the issue. When something like this happens, if it does, and we're not here anymore, you need people that are flesh and blood in your neighborhood, groups, meetups, churches. That's what you need to do because they will be able to help you as you will be able to help them. Just like John said, you may be a, be a seamstress or, I mean, it's... A, a million different things and you're you could barter with people that's going to come more into effect and then one more thing and then i got a question for you john um also uh 
if you have a little bit of extra money, listen to what John's saying as far as dong or dinar, uh, silver, anything. Somebody on here said, I've been buying a little bit of silver at a time over the years. And what it does is it, now if you don't have that, again, you don't have even five, two nickels to rub together. The best thing to do is to get connected with your neighbors. You live in the city, I would, I would, I would meet everybody there. I would find a church there. I, at this point, you're not worried about what they're preaching over the pulpit. You are, if this happens, you're just trying to connect. That's what's going to save you, you the connections you make, the people so that you can help one another. Okay, John, um, they're, uh, they're saying, one person said, hold on, let me go back to it. Okay, you mentioned the revaluation, but if we have currency, how is this all going to work? Okay, so before I get into that, let me just back up something you said, and I agree wholeheartedly. The church is supposed to help people in times like this. During the pandemic, a lot of churches right. shirked their responsibilities to give food and medicine and water <clears throat> to a lot of people, so shame on them for that. The church is supposed to do that. And also, to the person about silver who was wisely accruing a little bit of a time, stockpiling, People can go and get what's called junk silver. It's still silver. Junk silver That's is right. nickels, dimes, anything before 1965 that had 90% silver in it. Now it's about 40, uh, 60, what is it? 60% zinc, I think. When I researched it a while back, junk silver is relatively cheap and that's going to be a great bartering tool and it's not expensive. <clears throat> so that's one thing right there. I'll tell you, it's a, what's interesting is my father, who's I speak of him all the time and my, my community knows that. Uh, he used to pick up different things on the side of the road when he was retired and uh, washing machines, all kinds of stuff. And he would strip the copper in the silver and he would, it would mount up and then he would go bring it and he would make all kinds of money. It's an amazing thing. Okay. Well, so what would they do? How would, how does it look? They have dogs. How yeah. does that look? It's very simple. Okay, I know there's a lot of people out there saying it's complicated. It's not. It's not. Okay. They have, when I say they, people saying that, I'm not, I'm not going to call anybody out because we don't do that. We don't bash people. We're going to stay above board. But there's a lot of people that have been in this community for years. Name your name. Oh, it's today, 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 tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. It's going to be this rate and this date and this rate and this date. And you got to go to a redemption center and you got to call an 800 number. Really? Let's use some common sense, folks. Was this, Laura, you have currency. Was it easy to buy? Yeah, it's simple. So it's going to be easier to sell. Here's something nobody else has said. I, I'm not saying I'm anything special, but for some reason, I'm the only one saying it. You have two points of heat on you in a good way. Firstly, the bank's going to want it. And the treasury-backed currency dealers who sell it will buy it back. They'll buy it back now. They'll try to get you on a lower rate because they know what it's worth. Hold on for dear life. Go to the bank with your currency. Go with somebody to protect you. Go to a bank in an area you, you don't know normally go to. Don't build a pattern. There's people who are going to be watching. Go somewhere on the other side of town. If you have to go, if you're in neighboring states that are close to each other, you can get, you know, like let's say from <clears throat> Kentucky to Alabama, you know, where it's relatively close. Go an hour away. Go somewhere where nobody knows you. Go with one note. Build a relationship. Ask to see the back screens. Give as little information as possible. Exchange that note if you feel in your discernment that they're doing right by you. They'll then ask you, hey, do you have anything else? I might. Why? Oh, because we have, you know, we're also buying da 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 Great. Take their card and say, call me in a week or whatever when it's gone up to its full maturity. And you can be watching the Forex, F-O-R-E-X, or the CBI, which is Central Bank of Iraq, they have websites. It's it's in Arabic, but you can do Google Translation. You got to do a little work, God forbid, and you'll know what the rates are. So I have a question for people, for you, Delora. Critical thinking stuff. My my followers know this. Number one, how is Iraq going to reinstate, not revalue, on a program rate? Program rate is a 
is like welfare. It's supposed to be for a fixed period of time, but they've been doing this for 14 years corruptly so they could live off the dollar and off their citizens, <clears throat> right? Can't happen until that changes. Two, how is Iraq going to reinstate with an Iranian militia military and a proxy corrupt government like here, you know, optically, as countries copy each other, until that's lifted? Three, how's it going to happen with our deep state military hanging over them? Because the U.S. hates competition. So those three things have to be addressed and remediated before this is going to happen. Now, the good thing is that's in progress, but you have to think critically. It's a very simple process to exchange. It's not complicated at all. You don't need Yeah. I have to Everybody laugh. makes a big deal about it, John. Well, they overthink it and they overanalyze it. And, you know, this nonsense about, oh, you're going to call an 800 number. Really? You are you don't even let spam calls come through your phone. You're going to make an 800 number and talk to somebody you don't even know and give them all your currency and what you have? Really? Like gullible line two. How about, um, <laughs> you're, I mean, it's absurd. You're going to have an alien <laughs> outside the bank that's going to measure your heart light and your intent. That's what some of these people are saying. Or It's absurd. Oh, or your redemption center. What's a redemption center? Do you even ask? It's a bank. What? There's no redemption centers. These hotel deals never start business with somebody who starts with, buddy, it's probably a not a good place to start. Common sense really needs to take over. And as Thomas Paine wisely said, common sense is highly uncommon. So that's as simple as that. There's nothing to it. It's just an exchange. <clears throat> okay. A um, couple other questions came up. What yep. about Zim? Great question. It's a bond, not a currency. Now, I'll explain kindergarten, as you say. What is it, You can do a Google definition, so you don't have to take my word for it, and I encourage everybody to do their own research. So I did. I said, everybody would ask me, what's the difference between a bond and a currency? Because I don't think much about it because I already know, but like you said, sometimes you have to kind of step back to meet people yeah. where they are. Yes. <clears throat> so a bond is a dead instrument from country to people. So like a savings bond, you can buy it from the government, you can hold it for 12,000 years and maybe you'll get a hundred bucks out of it if you're if you're Methuselah. <laughs> but it's a dead instrument between the country <laughs> and, and the citizens or the residents until that said country assigns it a value. We'll get to that in a second. That's imperative for the Zim. A currency is a little bit different, but not much. It's a dead instrument that goes between the country and the bank or institutions, clearing houses, lending houses, banks, credit unions, what have you. Those are all institutions. A prison is an institution. And we've been in financial prison in said banks, back to the original question. So they're interchangeable. There's very little difference between the two. The Zim has Nelson Chamisa, who is the people's president. Like, who else do we know? Hmm, president Trump? Sound familiar? The countries copy each other. Look at patterns. Everything is about codes and numbers and patterns. I'm not a math guy, but I'm a puzzle piece guy, and I can see the pieces on the board very clearly. It's like war games. You can see all of these laser points intersecting at a center point. So <clears throat> Shemisa is the people's president. He's a Christian. I've done shows with uh, David Mahoney. People can watch that where we have presentations, he, his, his quotes on X that he said the Zim will be the breadbasket to the world. That means they can feed the world. They could literally carry the BRICS nations all by themselves. They're in line to be accepted next to these 30 to 40 countries going in. Serbia is just about to be welcomed in, in the next uh, group of countries. So they're on the list. That's one I'd be watching. They have the most amount of gold we talked about offline per world, undisputed trillions of gold and 132 million metric tons below the ground. I've done my research, folks. That's how I know this stuff. I'm not making it up. So they are the kingpin champions. They are the, you know, Muhammad Ali of, of gold and rhodium and platinum. And we know about their diamonds and many, many other things. Lush agriculture for farming. And they're very attractive to do business with. Their problem has been the same as Vietnam, corruption. That's being remedied. <clears throat> they have elections on August 23rd. That can easily be preempted, as we've shared on our channel. So once Chamis is appointed, he's going to take over and, and repatriate, meaning hydrate the bonds and the dollars in gold, digital gold. Obviously, you're not well, back to the bank. This kind of ties two things. You're not going to come out of the bank with, you know, hundreds of millions or billions in paper money. It's digital. Right. So you'll have an account and you can put it in there. I recommend having a common law, um, private, irrevocable trust 
where you don't own anything, but you contract with the trust. That's something I'm personally doing. And it's been done for years and years and years by very savvy, wealthy people. In fact, Forbes interviewed years ago, it came off the top of my head, so let me just roll with this real quick, Delora. Um, while you're Please go. Your while you're doing your stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm, tr I'm trying to answer questions. <laughs> I, know, I know. I've been where you are. It's like a stenographer. And um, Forbes asked years ago, the wealthiest families like the Van, Van, Van Furstenbergs and other people, how did they maintain their wealth into the 20th to the 21st century? Three key things. Real estate, precious metals, and fine arts, paintings, you know, Picassos, Monets, things that are irreplaceable, one of a kinds. So as a professional musician, I'm going to be investing in high end equipment anyway that appreciates and doesn't appreciate that has a lot of these said assets. I also happen to love these instruments. So it's a plus, but these are physical, tangible things that you can touch and own. If you don't touch it, you don't own it. But yeah, the Zim is big time, big time along with the Vien My number one currency prefer preference is the Vietnamese dong and my number one. Bond. Okay. That's what they wanted to know. So yep. dong first. Then what? Well, I get get dinar. Dinar, and, dinar and dong. I would be getting the uh, um, Indonesian rupiah. I'd be getting the Thai bot, the Venezuelan boulevard. Obviously, we get endlessly hounded about that question. <clears throat> I mean, th they're not all going to go at once anyway, because that would be insider trading. Number one, number two, and more importantly, while we're here, God knows His people are at a different financial puberty stage, for lack of a better term. Some people are That's right. this during the beginning and know about the darn, the darn dong. Some people don't know anything about this stuff and are just coming on board for the first time. So some people are going to miss certain things. So he's going to open up portals between the currencies to help people get on board. And when Nick Van Yaman asked me this question, which was kind of surprising that he put me up against the wall, he said, well, how much dinar would you tell people to get? And I said, I can't tell people. That's between them and God. Absolutely. They have to ask. That's he right. might tell you not to That's get right. anything. He might tell you to get a lot, but you're not going to know until you ask him and spend time quietly listening and waiting is the key. Number one, number one key. So, um, but I, you know, Dong Dinar, those other ones I mentioned, uh, and, and, you know, as you go through the wealth transfer cycle there, th this, this is a deep pool. This isn't, these are waves. It's not a tsunami. It's not a one shot deal. This is going to go on for a few years, thankfully. So this is part of the harvest, right? So I know as you're watching the questions, hopefully I'm addressing some of the things people want to know. Yeah, um, yeah, go for like yeah. go like checkers. Like when you're playing checkers, you one to the next to the next to the next, leapfrog your position. As you get in, you exchange the dinar, move up if God tells you, of course, to the dong. If, and then from the dong and so on and so forth. Along the way, though, be acquiring precious metals. Um, I'm personally a fan of certain cryptocurrencies like XRP, XLM, XDC. My friend John G on our team always says X marks the spot, right? Because they're they're going, they're not now, but they're going to be backed by, you know, XRP gold, XLM silver, which is known as commonly stellar lumens, XDC, which is copper. We talked about this a lot of my different shows with people. Copper is a great backstop to silver. Why? Manufacturing. Silver is in virtually everything that we do, we consume, and we live. This computer we're on, the, the watch you're wearing, the, the phone you have, it, you know, the parts in your car, heavily. So uh, um, solar panels here in California are big. Most of the houses in my neighborhood have anywhere from 20 to 200 silver, um, solar panels in their house, depending on the size. Did you know that each solar panel comprises of two ounces of silver per panel? That's huge. That's hundreds, potentially hundreds of ounces of silver, depending on how many you have. People don't even know it, Right. And so it's in comprises everything. So when silver runs out <clears throat> for manufacturing, they're going to be looking for a backstop. Right. They're going to be looking for copper, yep. palladium, platinum, yep. like they use in yep. filling for yep. people. They take their so just be thinking common sense strategy in this. Yeah, don't be don't be overwhelmed. Let me let mm -hmm. if I can. Mm -hmm. Let me let me. I don't I don't have the knowledge of this that John has. So let me bring it down to base. Okay. Silver is in everything, just like he said. If you have uh, any extra money, you want to put it in silver, perhaps that's a possibility. Um, all, there's places all over online you Google, you can buy dong. That's from Vietnam. That's the currency. Dinar. Uh, Zim. I mean, he mentioned all kinds of currencies that will all reevaluate and will be worth more. So if that, if, and this is not true, but if one dong 
is worth a dollar right now, when it revalues, that dong could be worth $3. So every dollar you have would be $3. If you have a thousand dong, you now have $3,000, not 1,000. Okay, I hope that explains things to everyone. I know this is different. This is really different for, uh, uh, I know all of you guys. Now, I got, because we're getting uh, da- here, I got to ask you a couple sure, more guys. things. Sure. I get this all the time. Now, I'm going to give you two and you decide which way you want to go. What happens to money in banks if they go out in mortgages? About 10 people ask that. And is Nassara real? So I'll go, uh, there's three things I want to say. So I'm going to answer your questions and go back to something you said on the dong because I want to give a breakdown of why it's my favorite currency. So just bear with me. Yes, Nassara is real. It goes back to Leviticus 25, 9 through 11. Um, Dr. Scott Young and I have done many shows on this. In fact, I'm going to have them on my podcast next week. I encourage your, your fans to watch that. Where where can they find you, John? Um, they can find me on YouTube and Rumble and BitChute. At um, on Rumble, it's just my name, John Dowling. We'll have the links in the description, I'm sure. Uh, they can find me, John Dowling and Chris C H R I S Real World on uh, BitChute and YouTube, so they can find us there. We're also creating a new platform. I want to talk about for a minute. Now, I'll answer your questions. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten. I'm not sidestepping. Okay. I'm shirking. Okay. Uh, but we're, okay. We're creating a very privatized channel because we know YouTube's going to start, cr- you know, cracking yeah. down and censoring big time. Well, I, I'm, they threw me off as it is. Well, with what I'm sharing, it's just a matter of time. So we've already wisely, my, me and my team have gotten ahead of it. We're creating a channel called Real World Academy. They can go to www. It's not completed yet, but they can look at it. www.realworldac.com. And what it is, Delora and folks, it's a consortium website. It's a private membership-based website. It's not very expensive. It's done. We're not grifting you. We're just trying to get out of the matrix where we can't share our, our knowledge. Mm-hmm. So this is the best way we can do that. The benefits are, are we can say what we want, which is the truth. We're not going to get censored, gets rid of the trolls and bots and AI and all that dead waste that we all can't stand and ads, by the way, which is a huge plus. You're going to be able to get live chat access with me, Nick Benyamin, Holly, and many other patriots that are in our network, possibly yourself, to learn if you're interested down the road. And we're also going to have access to CEOs and business owners globally. So if you have a product or service you want to take to market, you can talk to them or maybe you make a similar product. You you might need funding or or you're coming into this funding and you want a partnership because you want to partner with somebody who has more expertise in that respective field than you do. You'll be able to do partnerships, synergize. It's it's, it's about networking and and bringing people together, like-minded patriots who have felt misunderstood, ostracized, judged by our friends, by our families, by the community, which should be virtually everyone in this group. So that's a great place. I really recommend people go to the other channels, but start investigating that because that's going to be the future of how we're going to do things. Now, uh, as far as Nassar being real, yes, um, I've had 40 to 50 people over the last several years send me emails, texts, uh, showing me pictures of their credit card, their cars, their student loans, all that kind of stuff being forgiven. It's known, as we said, Leviticus 25, 9 to 11, the debt jubilee. That's ostensibly what it is. And its its correct term is Nessera, by the way, but that's another story. Uh, back to your, what was the banking question you had before that? Uh, what happens with people who have savings and mortgages? They're asking if the bank goes under what happens now. Of course, I know FDIC. <laughs> Uh, which, but it, that is that going to even hold? No. I mean, that's a government thing. They couldn't even insure a sandwich right now. That's, that's what, what Basel, I'm saying. That's what Basel three and four compliance is about, folks. Is is holding the banks accountable for once that they have to have the gold and silver they say they do. They can't just say it; they have to verify it. And if they can't, they're gone. So only the strong survive. If in the event a bank is going down, how are they going to collect on a debt if they're out of business? Do you know any businesses, mom and pop, that go out of business and still try to collect on previous customers? No. So it's the same axiom. It's the same principle. Um, But again, I would be diversifying banks. You know, I'm personally in Wells Fargo. They're not a saint. I know that. But they're the flagship for the reset. And they've done all kinds of mistakes and malfeasance and theft. That's established. And nobody's arguing that. 
but they are the flagship bank. I've talked to wealth managers personally and private bankers to open up my trust. And I've asked them if, you know, offline, if they're going to be involved. And they said, yes, I've, there's a bank, uh, there's a, you should be looking for a, a branch that is specifically a wealth management center. You'll denote that a lot of branches are going away right now because they're getting rid of the fat extra branches they don't need for convenience and scaling it down to the ones that have the most foot traffic whereby they can use them as a wealth management center. You ask yourself, why would these banks spend, you know, hundreds of thousands, possibly depending on, you know, where you are in the New York city, millions of dollars to remodel these brands. They're not doing it because they like opulence. They can barely keep their jobs. They're doing it for this opportunity because they make what's called a basis point, a 1% basis point for every transaction, which roughly equates to a hundred thousand dollars. So you go in one time, it's that if you go in 10 times, it's, you know, that per transaction, but that is a pittance because there's no taxes on it. Cause there wasn't any taxes when we bought it, What you paid was an exchange. I don't want to hear people arguing. You paid an exchange fee. That's the cost of doing business. Folks, a broker charges you when you buy stocks, they get a brokerage fee, a, a, a realtor for a house charge you a, a real, a realty fee, their, their, their commission. That's how they make money. It's the same thing. These bank, these, dealers are not in business to be UNICEF. They have to make a profit. So there are no taxes on the books now. How are they going to put one then if we're going into Nassara or Nessara, excuse me? Uh, it'll be a flat tax of 14%, as I understand it, only on new cars yeah. and homes, not existing stuff. So yes, it is real. It's not a figment of imagination. Um, I would just say, you know, when, 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 same as the currency. Be patient, wait your turn, trust God's timing. It's not our timing, but he's always on time. Perfect time. So on the on the Vietnamese dong, I'm going to give a breakdown to your audience, kindergarten style. Yes. You have a calculator with you, Delora? I have the, uh, I just have my, oh, my one phone, on my phone. phone. Sure, go ahead. I want them to see that it's not me saying it's you. So there's no sleight of hand. Okay. If you okay. took a thousand dollars US today and bought Iraqi dinar, the street value roughly would be about it would cost you about 1200 well no uh, well depending where you got it any i'm just saying conservatively between 970 to 1200 dollars depending on the dealer depending on the rate that day you know um for a million dinar so you'd be holding roughly a million dinar per thousand us aggregate if you bought vietnamese dong and you go on the forex it's roughly 23612 the last time i checked dong per dollar it's stupid cheap right now the difference between the dinar and the dong is the dinar has a financial problem. The Vietnamese dong does not. They have a corruption problem. That's what the China-Taiwan conflict is for, is for Xi on the Republic side, not the CCP, to go in and free them up enough, not 100%, but enough to extrapolate them out of communism to free up in silver, Litecoin, which is a crypto, and many, many other resources they have, rent crude in their oceans that, that our government and China has fought over for years. Does anybody remember 2020 during the scamdemic when we were down, President Trump and Mike Pompeo, doesn't matter if you like him or not, I'm just stating facts, invested almost a trillion dollars in the Indo-Asia Pacific Initiative into Vietnam. Why would they do that? Common sense should tell you, we're telling you why. So if you buy a million, excuse me, if you buy a thousand US worth of Vietnamese dong today at present rate, again, depending on the dealer, you're looking at somewhere between 15 to 20 million dong. If they go as an argument, one to one, you're getting a million US for that dinar and 15 to 20 million US for dong. You heard right. For the dong. Now, we don't talk dates and rates, but here is a clue. We just talked about a digital economic reality, right? Backed in natural assets. So when your grandparents, when you were a kid, Delora, they'd go cash their paycheck. Maybe some people here in the chat can attest to this. And they had the option of getting physical gold and silver as part of their paycheck, right? We're going back yeah. to that, but we're doing it digitally. That's the only difference. That's the main difference. Right. So right. If, let's put the clues together. If we're going on a digital economic reality on natural assets, right? With me so far? That's going to spike the value, especially if it's been suppressed. This is like a slingshot. We've been holding it back like this. Well, what did Einstein say? Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Yes. When it yeah. coils yes. the other way, it yes. should go much Great higher point. Than, than we think. So I wouldn't worry about rates. I would I would say, how much do you trust the Lord? What did he say in Jeremiah 29, 11? For I, I, you know the plans I have for you, my child. Plans to what? Prosper you. 
not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Why do we call ourselves Christians if we're not going to go back to the Bible as our artillery in times like this? We need to back it up with actions. So I trust that my That's Yeshua right. is, is for my good, not my harm, because he's bailed me out of way too many things I've messed up in life. So I know he's a, a redeeming God. So my point is, don't focus on the dates and rates. Focus on what are you going to do when it happens? If it happened today, most people wouldn't know what to do because they have no plan or a plan to act. Yet you're, the wrong question to be asking is when and how much. The right question is, what am I doing to prepare for this when it happens? And do I trust God to just, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11 me? This thing is going to go a lot higher than people could ever imagine. This is Ephesians 3.20 in, in play. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, all right. We're going to, I'm going to have you pray, John, uh, okay. pray us out. But um, there, somebody said, I still don't know what happens to our savings. <laughs> okay. Let's go back to what we just said. Let's, let's start yeah, again. Last one. I promise yeah. you I'm having them back on soon. We'll do part two. Go ahead. Yeah, next, John. Next, month, next month we'll do part two. We'll um, do part two. And so on and so forth. Uh, what happens to savings? There, many people think with the QFS, it's going to get mirrored off the system and anything they try to do, you will get back. And so I wouldn't be too concerned about that. If you are proactive, if you're that concerned about that bank, like I said earlier, write notes, write things down that we're saying. Don't just keep asking the same questions. Write it down. Go back and watch this video. Go and get another bank that you feel comfortable with. Maybe... I don't know if your parents' bank is still open or something. I'm just making an example. Find yeah. a credit union, union or a community bank, again, that doesn't have hardly any debt that you trust. Maybe your friends can refer you a great bank where they've had no issues and diversify your bank accounts. Don't have it all in one bank. You know, Just keep the bare minimum in that one and spread it out expeditiously over others if you're that concerned about it. But that goes back very to Very good. That. Very, very good. Uh, that's a great answer. You know, it's always, look, like you said, it's always good to diversify everything. Mm -hmm. When you get in trouble is when you've got everything in one basket and the basket falls apart. Then it's, uh, you know, you're in trouble. Uh, okay, guys, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to end this. I'm going to have John um, pray us out. Uh, but I promise you, John and I will talk. I'll have him back on. Um, we will, we will definitely, yeah, they're saying yes, part two, please, please, please. Yes. Did, did definitely we answer their, part did two. We, did we answer their questions yes. for the most part? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For the most part, we got them all. Some people are a little confused, <laughs> but that's okay. As we speak about it again, you'll be less confused and you'll understand it. Okay. John, play us, pray us out, please. My brother. <laughs> I'm sure sister. Abba Father, we come to you today. We thank you for getting us through yet another day because tomorrow is promised to no one. Um, you created this channel and this platform for us both respectively to get your truth, not our opinions, not our ego, not our mind, but your truth, Lady Wisdom, to the, to the Christian community who needs desperately clarity in times of chaos for a time such as this. I pray with all my might that, that Delora and I achieve that today, that that message reverberated with resonance of clarity and purity and simplicity to the people listening, both on my channel and on hers respectively, that by virtue of this, it calmed some of the waves, if not all of them, for the people. Understanding that there will be more of a cleanup process in the clarity, which is fine, but we pray that initial waves of calm washed over the people mm. listening that they Amen. come away from this um, program, this podcast, with a sense of peace and clarity and a sense of direction because you are not a rudderless God. You are not a directionless God, and you did not make us in that way. You gave us everything equipped on this earth that we would ever need. Now we just need to stay cling to you like a life raft and follow where you go, how you go. And Lord, I would pray that those who still have confusion would go seek you would spend time or more time with you than anyone. Amen. And most importantly, wait to hear the still small voice. It's a discipline that you've, excuse me, a discipline you've imbued in me for a number of years. It's been a honing process. It's, it's an art form to it. 
And when we sit and are patient and are waiting to listen and have no expectations, that's when you've always come through for me. And in the process, Lord, let us be thankful and grateful. Let us constantly praise you with all of our heart, soul, might, and spirit, as the word says. Let us be grateful as if it's already happened, because it has. Mm. It's a matter of it coming down to us in the natural. We need to pick and choose every day with our free will to have faith over fear. I'm not saying it's easy, and you never said it would be. In fact, your word says, I have told you these things so that in me you would have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. John 16. Amen. And you didn't write these verses because you had nothing better to do. You wrote them so that we could exercise them like a, like a muscle for this time. And so we pray that uh, this would get across to however many people hear it throughout the country, throughout the entirety of the world. The world, as you know, your world, your kingdom, your people are in very different places. Everybody's struggling to a degree. People have issues. People are unsettled. But you are the God of peace, not of confusion. You are not of chaos. That's the enemy. He comes to seek, kill, and destroy. But you came to bring life now, everlasting. So let us tap into that. And we look forward to reconvening again in the future. And we thank you and we, we praise you for all these things in Yeshua's mighty name. We pray. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Amen, 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 amen. Uh, okay, uh, one just guys doing Chicago gathering, help us get there. Uh, it's always free. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Go to joincountry.com, Dolores Closet. Just look at all this stuff in there, see if you like it. Also, with us, we partnered with. Um, we partnered with a an American company. Uh, go to wearetakingitback.com. Help us out there, American made family. Get off the cabal stuff and uh, help us out that way. Okay, uh, John, one more time. What is your website that you are going to begin? Uh, it's www.realworldac, like air conditioning, realworldac.com. You can find me on Rumble under my name. And then, of course, YouTube, uh, John Dowling and Chris Real World and BitChute as well. Wonderful. Awesome. This has been amazing, John. Thank you for your time. I know you're very wanted right now. You've got all kinds of shows everywhere. I appreciate you squeezing us in. And hopefully in a few weeks we can do it again. And uh, that way, everyone will kind of be up a little bit. We can go a little bit deeper and further sure. on what we're going to speak about. Uh, good night, every, everyone. Um, you know, Monday is not a day for me normally to do this. But <laughs> John and I, I mean, we kept trying to find a day and it was crazy. So, um, you know, maybe next time we'll be, maybe we'll try to do a Wednesday. And I know there'll be even more people on. Um, love you all. Thank you again, my friend, for coming yeah. on. Uh, thank you for your wisdom. Remember all week, go in the power of God. Good night, everybody.